For an Illinois Senate perspective on the spring session issues, we're joined by Senate Republican Whip Karen McConaughey of St. Charles and Chicago Democratic Senator L.G. Sims Jr. Welcome back to the program and welcome back in the capacity as a new senator. Thanks, Jack. I appreciate it. Good, good to, to be have, back. Good to have you both here. Well, we were just talking with two of the House budgeteers about uh, efforts to pass a budget before May 31st. What's the Senate's take on where we are here in the second week of May? Senator Sims? I think, I think we're... We're making progress. Uh, is it as quickly as I'd like? Probably not. Uh, but I think we're we're, st we're still we're still working towards the May 31 deadline, which I think we'll make. I think we'll I think we'll have a budget. We'll pass a budget by the by the end of the by the end of the month. And uh, what happens after that, we'll see. Are you as confident? Uh, no, but I'm glad to hear that Senator Sims is that <laughs> confident. Uh, you know, actually, I, I think in the Senate, uh, the, on both sides of the aisle, there's a, there's a lot of communication and uh, work going on to cross off as many items sure. as possible, right, to, to try to get to a solution. I think right now there's a little bit of a discussion going on about do we need to set a revenue number? Um, and, and, and uh, you know, I happen to be one of those people that thinks, yeah, you need to set a revenue number because you need to know how much you have to work with before you start putting together your budget. And I think that's, that's part of the discussion we're having. As President Cullerton said after the leaders' meeting recently, what, what we'd like to have is a discussion about the entire budget. We want to make sure that we're not, we're not locking ourselves into a, a number prematurely, but we want to make sure that we have a, a budget plan that, that, it, that addresses all of our issues. Uh, we, we have the governor's proposal before us, and we've been having some discussions about what, what takes, what's going to take place from there. Uh, we're thoroughly vetting those, and, and as, as Senator McConaughey has mentioned, we are having some discussions both between the Senate Republicans and Senate Democrats, uh, but also the, with, the, with our House colleagues as well. But I think uh, that's why, again, I'm, I'm, I'm an eternal optimist, Jack, and I, I, believe that we'll, I believe we'll get there. We like that as a newcomer from the House. <laughs> it was overall fresh and dewy-eyed. Yes, I, 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 I was the same way in the House. I was the same way in the House. Uh, well, part of, part, of, part of the discussion, of course, in the last couple of days has been centering on, well, if you're talking about uh, setting a revenue target, which target are you going to use? You're going to use the governor's management and budget target, or you're going to use the Commission on Governmental Forecasting and Accountability. You're a member of that mm -hmm. group, mm -hmm. uh, COGFA for, for short. Uh, they're only about, what, $99 million yeah. apart? So what's the big deal? Well, and I think we, we, had, we also uh, we recently had uh, the Department of Revenue come in and talk to the group of, and, and as well as COGFA uh, to talk about some of the issues that, that, are, that, are, that we're face. And we're seeing that, you know, you'll, you'll see that uh, 20, 2018 revenues are doing a little bit better, but uh, what, what would that mean for 2019 revenues? So it's really, it really becomes a matter of having that discussion in totality, how we're going to have a, a discussion about the, the entire budget. And the COGFA was saying this week that the, it looks like you might actually have half a billion more uh, in terms of revenue during 2018. Yes. Uh, and the, but you can't really, you can't really uh, uh, use that in your bottom line because you don't know that it'll be back there in 2019. Is right. that the that's right. the assumption? Well, because you know federal revenue, federal source is doing better because of some of the, the the Medicaid spending and other federal spending we've been doing. So our reimbursement rates are higher. Uh, we're seeing some uh, some additional additional revenues receipts coming in through the personal income tax uh, from, from additional, additional sources there. So it really, it, you know, again, but that uh, will uh, addresses and uh, impacts how we, how we go forward in 2019's budget, though. Yeah, we really, we really have a better scenario to work with than we did a year ago, uh, what we were facing. And I was involved in last year's budget negotiations. It's a much more complex situation. That's why I think your optimism is probably not yeah. far off, because it's not that difficult for us right. to get where we need to go. Right. And, and Senator Sims, you're one of the so-called budgeteers uh, this, this time around, and, and you've been in that capacity before. Take us inside one of those meetings as much as you can say publicly about that. There, there, there's been a very profound difference on these revenue estimates. The Senate President John Cullerton saying, well, you may not want to be locked into this because more money may come or I don't know how you shake out the couch cushions to find all this, but you, he doesn't want to necessarily be locked into it. The governor and the Republicans do want something to say, this is how much we're going to spend. Well, but because there, there's, there, and there are also other policy decisions you could make uh, that might impact the overall the overall budget number uh, there you know, and before we and, and that, those are decisions that the leaders the leaders would have to make uh, as a group 
uh, and then and outline and coming from rank of ideas coming from rank and file. So we ha we'd have a have a, a revenue number that that might change. So we have we have the estimates now, but there may be some other policy changes that could come about that might change that that bottom line, that bottom line. As long as that, that new revenue isn't new taxes. <laughs> well, I, I, I would say I would say that um, that that would be the place that would absolutely not happen this yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, we are. I, I've, I've, there's not been one discussion coming from the Senate Democrats or the House Democrats or uh, any anybody in that room that talks about new taxes. Uh, but there, again, there may there there's there are other op, there are other options out there. Some there some, some folks have talked gaming. Some right. folks have talked yeah. legalization of marijuana. I mean, there there are other policy decisions that could be made. Whether that happens or not, we just don't know yet. Yeah, but we're in the last three three weeks, really, last three to four weeks of this session. So, uh, legalizing uh, recreational marijuana, although we could bring in several hundred million dollars to the state's coffers, that's probably not going to happen in an election year. And gaming, mm -hmm. gaming is always out there, yeah. but it never seems no one never seems to pull a trigger on it. Jack, you've seen we've seen some amazing things happen in the say. last couple <laughs> weeks of a session. So, right. I, you know, we, you know, it's we got a long we've got a long way to go. We haven't even hit May 15 yet. So you, you can you, you, <laughs> there is this thing called putting the bill on extended uh, deadline. That's a little trick you can play to actually let something find new life uh, in the last few days of a session. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, there is a you know one of the other aspects of the ongoing budget negotiations is the amount of money that comes from state revenue uh, to back to local governments down at the city, county, and, and, and village level. And there's a group of mayors who are very concerned about last year. Uh, was it last year or this year? They took a 10 percent cut. Is right. that what yeah. it was? And that. Right. Doesn't sound like a lot, but if you have a relatively small budget or even a big budget, that can be a big hit on your local resources. So we're hearing a lot from the mayors. Well, and and you know, uh, justifiably so. I mean, they've they've come to count on that money. That's always been a handshake agreement. But once you start receiving revenue and then spending it, you you develop obligations. And and you know, local units of government, uh, municipalities have the same sorts of problems that we have in state government. A lot of them have uh, short-funded pension problems that they've got to take care of. I mean, there's just, there's a lot of issues. Uh, you know, these are the people who provide direct services to the people of Illinois. Your electricity, your water, garbage pickup, police, uh, you know, they, they play an important role. So they're justified in the concern. But here's the, here's the bottom line. It, it's painful. It is a painful process. Everybody has to be part of the solution. So no one, can, no one should make any guarantee that it's going to remain intact. No, right? you agree? Oh, absolutely. We're, we're hearing, yeah. you know, I, I talk to the mayors across my district all the time, uh -huh. and they, they have the same concerns because they, they don't want to have to lay off firefighters or police officers, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a real concern. They don't, they don't want, to, they want it impacting direct frontline services. And as we, as we get down to the uh, end of the session, of course, uh, uh -huh. we're still looking for a number of things to happen, um, but there was, some, there was a deadline earlier in this month uh, in terms of adding constitutional referendum to the ballot in November. Redistricting didn't make it. Um, term limits didn't make it. The governor wanted that. Um, how, much, uh, how much play do you think? These issues, of course, are very important to people. They, they poll very well. Uh, my guess is th those are not going to, going to go away. We're going to hear about those again. I think I think you're going to continue to hear uh, about both of those issues because you're right. It is important to people. I think the you know the the redistricting issue has actually in the past received a lot of bipartisan support um, and continues to do so. Uh, that's just never been able to get past the Supreme Court to make it to the ballot. Uh, so I think somewhere along the line, you're seeing this happen in in other states. This is not unique to Illinois. This question about how we draw maps. Uh, so I I don't think it's an issue that's going. Way um, the term limits issue. That's a very controversial uh, proposal in in this building. Uh, I'm ha I you know I, I'd like to point out that while as important as that might be, you're going to have a 40 percent turnover likely of the general assembly in this election cycle. I. I'm not going to speak for the other side of the aisle, but I think a limit on leadership positions is probably, and we've talked about that passing and that Senate, resolution. Senate, 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 Senate passed that as part of its rules. Right. So. Right. So at this point, uh, this this is a, an ongoing issue, not going to not going to go away by any stretch. Uh, you mentioned turnover. Uh, I just saw over, like you said, 
37 incumbents or 21 percent of the House and Senate are not coming back next year. What does that do to the dynamic up here? Uh, although you're new to the Senate, you've been in the House mm -hmm. and you've been on Senate staff for a number of years. What's that do to the dynamic of this place? Well, it, it, it impacts the, the institutional knowledge that you have, but you know, I think there, there's always there's, there's something to be said about having new blood. Um, you know, and having having people with new ideas come in, but as, as you know, Senator McConnell you mentioned, you know, there there's a there's a huge amount of turnover. Uh, th but you know, it, it's it's good to make make sure that we are we're working on getting fresh ideas in, and that's what you see with with with, with the people who are who are serving currently. I, I always hasten to to tell people when you talk about term limits that it's, there's some some. Uh, thought that people are, are inherently doing things that are not in the best interest of, of the public. And that's just not the case. You find public public servants who are serving right now, they're doing tremendous work. They're working extremely hard under some very difficult uh, circumstances. There's a lot of, lot of expertise here that comes to play every day Absolutely. here in the Illinois Senate and the Illinois House and uh, a lot of institutional knowledge with both okay. of you. We, we appreciate your time on Illinois Lawmakers as always. Thanks, Senator Jeff. McConaughey, Thank Senator you. Sims, thanks for joining us.